This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. Am I having the relationship with God? I, I used to have one, but all of the distraction has taken me away from that. God is near to the ones with the broken heart. He's near you. And whatever brokenness you may be experiencing, here's what I want you to take with you today. God is near me. God is with me. have your Bibles this morning, go with me to the book of Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. We have been talking about overcoming brokenness, and we're going to continue with that today because for the most part, we've been trying to define it, uh, you know, what it is, and, and, and to, today we're going to begin to talk about brokenness um, and how it relates with with wholeness. And, and this is going to be so very important because uh, I, I've never quite had a series of sermons that I studied that, that really impacted me as this series of studies. I, I thought that I would wait until we could all come back together in, in church and begin to teach the series, but, you know, Praise God, you're, you're there, you're listening into it now, and I pray that you take good notes and just follow me through this. This is really going to help you out. And for those of you who say, well, this sermon's not for me because I'm not broken, I, I can't tell you, you're just so wrong about that. And uh, as you hear and understand and learn, you begin to see that uh, Jesus came uh, for that very, very, very purpose to heal and to provide wholeness in place of brokenness in your life. Uh, let's begin with looking at, we've been trying to dish out different definitions of brokenness. And um, I, I want to look at it from yet another perspective this morning. Brokenness, and listen to this, it's the fundamental disorder. That's important. It, it, it's the fundamental disorder that exists in creation that affects a person's relationships and behavior. It's the fundamental disorder that exists in creation that now ultimately will affect a person's relationships and a person's behavior. Now, I want you to really look at that word disorder because when God created everything, it was, it was good. When God created anything, everything, it was in good order. And so I'm saying to you that brokenness, from the perspective we'll look at it today, is it is a fundamental disorder that exists in creation that will eventually affect a person's relationships and behavior. Now, we experience it inwardly in a way that the Apostle Paul describes as the pull between what's right and what's wrong. Um, and so we know what is good, but sometimes we choose the opposite of what is good. Let, let me show you this in Romans chapter 7, verse 14 and 19. 
you know, the Apostle Paul described it as a pull between right and wrong, and where we know what is good, you know what's good, but you seem to choose the opposite. Look how Paul described this, Romans chapter 7, verse 14. We'll read verse 14 through 19. He says, for we know that the law is spiritual, but, but I am carnal and sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. 16. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing, for to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would I do not, but the evil which I would not that I do. Now, outwardly, this disorder is expressed by mm, can scandals of greed, uh, sexual abuse, and even other crimes that uh, seemingly are becoming ever more prevalent year by year. But I guess the first question here would be, where does brokenness come from? Where does brokenness come from? Where did this disorder come from? Well, it comes from Satan. I'm not going to even beat around the bush. It comes from Satan. It comes from the devil. The devil is the source of disorder. The world's way uh, and, and God's creation was good. Satan is the source of all disorder. Uh, let, 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 let's go through the scriptures for a moment. Gal uh, Genesis chapter 1 and, and verse 27. I, I want to show you how this works. God created everything good. God is a good God. He created everything good. And I'm defining brokenness as a fundamental disorder that exists in creation that affects a person's relationship and eventually will affect that person's behavior. Well, look at Genesis 1, 27, for example. He says, so God created man in his image, his own image, and the Im image of God created he, him, male and female created he, them. And then in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7, it says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. He breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. But then in Genesis 1, 31, And God saw everything that he had made. You just see he made man and woman. God saw everything that he had made. And behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So everything God made, from man to woman to earth, everything that God made, he said it was very, very good. And then to take it a little step further, if you look in Luke chapter 18, Luke chapter 18 and verse 19, uh, verse 19 says this, he says, And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good except one that is God. So God says everything he's created is good. Man was created good. Woman was created good. The earth was created good. And then Jesus declared of the Father that God is good. So one of the things you've got to understand is that the fundamental disorder that exists in creation did not come from God. The fundamental disorder that exist in creation that will eventually affect a person's relationships and that affects a person's behavior did not come from God. The coronavirus did not come from God. God is good. And so one of the things you have to understand is God, somebody says, well, God sent the coronavirus to humble his people. No, God didn't have anything to do with the coronavirus, but now that it is here, I guarantee you he is going to do all kinds of things in the midst of this situation hopefully, which includes drawing you to him so you can trust him more than you trust the things that you have been trusting over the last several years of your life, maybe your whole life. So there are consequences for this disorder. There are consequences for brokenness. There was a fracture 
in, cre in creation. The disorder that came by the devil, the source of disorder. The Bible says Satan came, come is not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. There are consequences. There are consequences that you're probably all aware of, but I'm going to call a few of them out so that you'll understand that all of these consequences are a result of brokenness and disorder that came from the source of disorder, Satan. Adultery is a consequence of, of brokenness. Alcoholism is a consequence of brokenness. Anger is a consequence of brokenness. Fear is a consequence of brokenness. Bearing grudges is a consequence of brokenness. Child abuse, whether it's uh, physical abuse or psychological abuse or sexual abuse or neglect, it's a consequence of brokenness. Drug addiction or addictions of any kind that are hurtful and harmful is a consequence of brokenness. Envy is a consequence of brokenness. Evil speaking, I'm talking about talking about someone, even if it's true, that's a consequence of, of brokenness. Failure to forgive, and you just still can't figure out how to forgive, that's a consequence of brokenness. Fornication, sex outside of marriage, it's a consequence of brokenness. Failure to, to thank God and, and to be grateful and, to, and to, 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 to trust in God, that's a consequence of brokenness. Lying and belittling other people, that's a consequence of brokenness. Selfishness is a consequence of brokenness. I can go on for the next 30 minutes and talk about all of the consequences of brokenness, all of the things that showed up because of disorder and a fracture that came into our world, the fundamental disorder that exists in creation that affects a person's relationship and will eventually affect that person's behavior. Brokenness. And now that brokenness of man, that, that disorder that that calls brokenness that's in a man, that disorder that calls a fracture in, in a man, that disorder that calls this disorder even in how God created man. One of the things we understand about the brokenness of man, that in this world, broken things, listen to me carefully, in this world, broken things are despised. Broken things in this world are thrown out. In this world, damaged goods are rejected, and that includes people. In this world, when people meet people who are fractured or broken in an area, they consider them like damaged goods, and, and they throw them away. And, and, and when you're broken and, and you appear to be damaged, or somebody's talking about you on the, on the media, news media or dogging you out in the circle of the church, it, 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 people have a tendency to, to reject you. And, and while the world does that, and I can understand that, Jesus came uh, with the answer for brokenness, which is wholeness, and God wants the church Instead of throwing away and rejecting what is broken, he has called us to the ministry of reconciliation, and yet we still have a tendency to reject and to throw away what's broken in people. We still have a tendency to, to, to uh, not want to be around what's broken. We, we still have a tendency not to want to have to deal with, with, with the the brokenness that we see in, in, in relationships. We, you know, if it's broken, We've kind of picked up the same thing the world has. We reject you. We throw you away. And I'm telling you, that is not what Jesus died so that Christians can reject folks like the world, so that Christians can throw away what's broken like the world. We have the ministry of reconciliation. We don't throw away what's broken. We don't avoid what's, what's been rejected. We come and we say, we have the ministry of reconciliation. Praise God we're here to reconcile you and to love on you and to, and to not throw you away. Oh, God, give us a church filled with people who can be patient with brokenness and hopefully realizing their own brokenness. <laughs> Excuse me. Even in a marriage, when relationships break down, the tendency is to walk away and find someone new rather than work at reconciliation because that's the mindset. 
reject what's broken. My, my friend Bishop Kenny Fuller said that be careful when somebody tells you that the grass is greener on the other side because once you get on the other side, you'll find out that they didn't tell you it was artificial turf. <laughs> it is so important that as Christian people, we recognize that we live in a broken world, we're, we're surrounded by broken people, and yet now that we're born again, we don't do, we don't treat brokenness like the world does. We don't reject it, we don't cast it out. We enter into the ministry for which we were called, the ministry of reconciliation. Man, I can remember when I was being blasted all over the media, you know, I thought my preacher friends would be there, and, and, and a lot of them were, and I, and I thought that certain people would be there, and boy, I tell you, when people see you fractured and when they see you being dogged out, oh, I can't deal with you. Oh, I don't want to spend time with you. Oh, I got to take my invitation back from you because I'm afraid that your brokenness will stop my success. I'm afraid that, that your fracture will interfere with what I'm trying to get done, and I'm not going to do that. My job is to reconcile when I see something broken. My job is to reconcile when I see something that's been rejected. Say amen if you can. Say oh me if you can't. <laughs> you see, the world is full of people with broken hearts. The world is full of people with broken spirits. The world is full of people with broken relationships. But here's something that Psalms 34 verse 18 says, that even though the world is broken and the systems are even breaking even more now, and that people are broken and relationships are broken, and spirits of some people are broken. Here's what he said in Psalms 34, 18. The Lord is nigh unto thee. He is near unto them that are of a broken heart. Boy, that's something strange. We're trying to get away from those who are broken, and God says, I'm near to those who are broken. And then the Bible says, he saveth such as be of a contrite spirit, because Ladies and gentlemen, I still believe that somehow brokenness brings you to a place where you have a repentant heart. I believe that there's some beauty in brokenness that maybe you, you didn't mean to get into that situation, but there's something about brokenness that'll cause you to land in the hands of God. And even in the time of this COVID-19, hopefully something that's happened around you will cause you to reevaluate, am I where I need to be where God is concerned? Am I having the relationship with God? I, I used to have one, but all of the distraction has taken me away from that. God is near to the ones with the broken heart. He's near you. And whatever brokenness you may be experiencing, here's what I want you to take with you today. God is near me. God is with me. See, there's something about reaching a breaking point that causes the believer now to seek the Lord more sincerely. Uh, there's something about reaching a breaking point. There's something about stuff happening that causes you to seek God. Hopefully this whole shelter in place and, and COVID-19, uh, hopefully somehow, some way, it's caused you to seek the Lord more and to seek God more sincerely. In fact, in Psalms 51, I want to read verse 10 and verse 17, Psalms 51, verse 10, verse 17. You see, King David was a broken man. He was confronted by the prophet, and uh, this is what I call self-inflicted brokenness. He looked in, a, in an honest mirror, and he saw his sin, and he saw what he had done and what he had committed, and he was broken. And here's what David prayed in the midst of his brokenness. This is what David prayed in verse 10. He said, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. That brokenness moved him to pray this prayer. And then look what he said in verse 17. He said, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou will not despise. Something happens that causes the believer to seek the Lord more sincerely. And in David's, in David's life, the king, man, he would fall on his face and seek God with sincerity. Oh, my. What has to happen in your life before you can go and seek God with a sincere heart? 
and you're no longer doing things to maintain your fame. You're no longer doing things to impress people around you. You're no longer doing things so that others will accept you for validation. There's something that's happened in your life that says, God, I'm sincere with you. Somebody asked me one day, how do I define success? And I, I replied, I define success by having a successful relationship with Jesus Christ. Because there's nothing in this world, there's nothing I can get, there's nothing I can do that can be greater than knowing that I had a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So there are some things in our lives, I believe, that they need to be broken. I believe that pride needs to be broken. I believe that having self-will and, 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 and self you know, uh, motivation, just, just you, just you, uh, and, being, and being moved by self, uh, self-effort, I, I believe that needs to be broken. Uh, the stubbornness in our lives, I believe it needs to be broken. The sinful habits that we have in the booth, in the back, in the corner, I, I believe those things need to be broken. And, and, and God, in Isaiah 57 and verse 15, God responds to those who experience brokenness by saying this in Isaiah 57, 15, he responds to that brokenness by saying, For thus saith the, 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 the high and the uh, but thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. He says, I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humbled spirit. What happens when you eventually humble yourself? Why would he dwell with them? To revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. I believe there's something that happens, man, something that happens when those things are broken in your life. I, I believe God takes advantage of those things. And to us, broken things are despised as worthless, but God can take what has been broken and he can remake it into something better, something that he can use for his glory, taking what's broken and make it better. Not throw it away, not despise it, but take it. Look at 1 Corinthians uh, verse 11, 24 and 25. We shared this in our communion. God takes broken things and make it better. Don't let somebody tell you that your brokenness keeps you from God. Don't let anybody tell you that your fracture, you know, puts you in a place where God can't ever use you. Because I'm telling you, God allowed his son Jesus to be broken so he can come and provide wholeness for all of us. Think of that. Think of that. Look at this in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 11, 24. And when he had given thanks, he break it, and he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is, watch this, my body was broken for you. My body was broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. My body's broken for you. Huh. My broken body, broken, so that wherever you're broken, you can be whole. Look at the next verse. He says, and after the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. He shed his blood for you. Think about this. God allowed his son to be broken so that whoever is broken or whoever experiences brokenness can be made whole. God used brokenness in Jesus' life to bring about wholeness in our life. All I got to say, right where you're seated this morning, lift your hands up and say, how great thou art. Wow. You see, Jesus' death has made it possible for broken, sinful humanity to be reconciled to God, made it possible for us to be healed, made it possible for us to be made whole. And listen to this, and without the broken body of Jesus, we could not be made whole. Without the broken body of Jesus, there's nothing we can do that we could be made whole. God promised to deliver us from unresolved brokenness and make us whole again. 
Creflo Dollar dives deep into this topic that affects all believers and discloses relevant truths to help you overcome brokenness. Today's offer is a six-message series, How to Heal from Brokenness, and is available today for a love gift of 35 U.S. dollars or more. If he started the good work, he's going to finish the good work. Now, I don't know where you are. I don't, know, I don't know what ditch you've fallen into. I don't know what philosophy you've been buying lately. But if God started the work, he will finish the work. He will use every crazy thing in your life to make sure that the work is finished. Why? Because he is faithful. As an added bonus, we have combined the How to Heal from Brokenness series with the powerful CD, Heart of Nations. This combo can be yours for a love gift of 45 US dollars or more. Don't miss this opportunity to order yours today. Get your daily dose of grace on the Changing Your World podcast with Creflo Dollar. Keep the Word of God at the forefront of your mind every day when you download and stream these uplifting messages. Gain a revelation of the fullness of God's grace from Creflo Dollar's powerful sermons and transform into the powerful, victorious believer God made you to be. He will always take our brokenness, I believe, and he will bring new life and he will bring beauty from it. But thank God for the Word because it has the ability in and of itself to repair. With the Changing Your World podcast, you have encouraging and life-changing wisdom at your fingertips 24-7. Tune in whenever you need to be edified, no matter where you are. Subscribe to Changing Your World podcast with Creflo Dollar today on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your preferred podcast platform. We want to be sure we are living according to what God has taught us about giving. And we understand that giving and receiving is a spiritual law. It's a reflex of God's love. And I'm so glad that Taff and I begin to understand how to walk in this principle. But we give not out of necessity. We give out of a cheerful heart. We give because we're grateful and we're thankful to what God has done. You know, I, I want you to pray about uh, becoming a giver into Creflo Dollar Ministries today. And if this ministry has blessed you in any way, Consider sowing a seed of any amount, and we will greatly appreciate it. Thank you in advance for your support, and God bless you. Your financial donations into this ministry work all over the world to change countless lives. If you'd like to support our efforts to save the lost, you may call in or visit CreflodollarMinistries.org today. God bless you. Join us online as we bring you praise and worship from the World Changers Church family and the Word of God from pastors Creflo Dollar and Taffy Dollar. For more information, visit us at CreflodollarMinistries.org. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe.